have that intact so we can move forward with the motion. Pause. Well, I made this, uh, this notice of motion. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Because uh, I think we, uh, we've we had, uh, there's a, a bylaw that states that we, uh, we can't use any uh, agriculture, uh, prime agriculture area of the land for uh, any development. And I think maybe for a certain uh, Certain uh, issues in, or certain uh, things that we should be able to be doing that. So I, uh, I thought that uh, maybe we put it on the okay. agenda for uh, for next next agenda that would be in January, I guess, and that we could discuss if we want to make some changes to this uh, to the bylaw. Okay. Okay, no call the question. Those in favor? Those opposed? Carried. Uh, is everybody here for the 10 30? Mm -hmm. Yep, okay. Let's do that. So I will, um, I'm just going to introduce uh, the persons who are going to, who wish to speak to council today. So uh, Stan and Kathy Mahotchuk have been um, in discussions with the county with regards to a parcel that they currently lease, the grazing lease on a quarter section, and it's uh, the Northeast 271219 West of the Fork, which is north of Turin off of Highway 25. Uh, this parcel was uh, brought forward to council on September the 20th and be, to be uh, listed for sale with the option for the Mahachaks to have first right of refusal on it because they do have the grazing lease. We did do an appraisal for this property through uh, Reliance Appraisals to assess what the value is and which was sent in to us on November the 15th along with um, we did forward that with a letter to the Mahachaks offering them the first right of refusal. And with that, uh, they, Mr. and Mrs. Mahachuk asked to speak to council with regards to the purchasing of this parcel, and so they are here today to do so. Okay, any questions on that? Before we move forward. Okay, Mr. Mahachuk or Mrs. Mahachuk. First of all, I'll introduce myself. I'm Perry Mahachik. I'm going to speak here on behalf of uh, Stan Mahachik Farms Limited in regards to the purchase of the Northeast of 27 1219. First of all, I'd like to say good morning. Uh, on behalf of Stan Mahachik Farms Limited, I'd like to thank City Council for the opportunity to address the meeting. I know you guys are busy. Uh, it's in regards to the grazing lease number 27 12 19 west of the fourth that the county has decided to sell it at a appraised value of three hundred and eighty eight thousand uh, dollars to the best of my knowledge now this lease has been held for 50 odd years leased by the provincial government in the Mahatchik name we received the dark documents regarding this sale on November 27, 2018, three days prior to the deadline of December 1st, 2018, in which we were to respond as to whether or not we'd like to purchase this land. A better choice of delivery 
of such noise could have been selected by the county given the mail strike. That being said, let it be known to council that Stanley Mahatchik Farm Limited exercises their option of first refusal on the northeast of 271219 west of the fourth for a price of $206,700. Okay, this the above dollar amount is based on grassland sold in 2015 and is comparable to the spreading lease in particular. Our rationale for the price we stated is that even prior to any of these pieces being offered for sale, we pursued with the county the possibility of purchasing the northeast of 12, 19, 12, 19 west of the fourth of grassland. So at that time, a number of other leases were offered for sale. We questioned why our lease was not included at the state at the same time. Still, to this day, we have not been given reasons why our lease was not included. It seems to have fallen on deaf ears. The answers that were given to us by county officials were that they were new to the job and had no knowledge of prior happenings. We received the same answers when we were questioned why our lease fees of $10 an acre were so much higher than the surrounding municipalities. You would think one in their positions would familiarize themselves on the running of the county business, especially when questions are being asked. You would think they would look into doing some research. For three stressful years, both mentally and physically, we have exhausted every avenue seeking answers, knowing full well that assessed values could escalate due to other sole leases being broke into cultivated land. We understand cultivated land could hold a higher value than grassland, but bearing in mind money has to be invested to have grassland turned into cultivation. Our intention is to leave the grassland as such should, and for that reason should be assessed as grassland. We are submitting this letter to you, the council, this the 17th day of December, 2018, and hope that they will carefully and fairly review our concerns on these matters pertaining to the sale of the Northeast 27 1219 West of the Fort. Uh, in closing, and I'm just saying this from talking with the people that are involved in Mahatchik Farms Limited, the biggest question here is why? Why that land was not included at the same time as the other land in the surrounding area three years ago? That's how we're basing our value of the land. We address the council at that time, a long time ago, to purchase that land, and it was not included, yet the other land was sold. So the biggest question in our eyes is why. Thank you for your time. Sincerely, Patrick Parker's Limited for eight years of extent. Thank you very much. Any questions? Yeah, are there any questions to council? From council. Steve. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So is the appraise price of today, is that higher than what, or I guess comparable to the land that sold back then, or do you? Absolutely not. The appraised value that they've given us is a lot higher now than it was three years ago, to the best of my understanding. And that's why we're basing our price as we are, because we asked back then council to purchase that land. And for some reason, and that's why we're here today, not so much to discuss the value why wasn't that sold at that time? That is the reason why the value is what it is right now in our eyes. Steve, Mayor Morris. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Penny, I hear you loud and clear down there. Uh, uh, what I was really puzzled over too, how little information I got, and it's my division, and you would think, you know, I would have been informed too, and I would have, could have been maybe jumping better on the bandwagon, you know, but the thing is, I didn't know either. Yeah. 
and see that. Well, some the, some of the statements was what somewhat in management hands and and I'm not sure you're due to where management changes that things got lost maybe. Yeah. And see we understand that <coughs> at the point we're at this is the at this point the council can rectify what's happened in the past three years. And the second concern of course in this matter is as I stated in the letter, I mean, three short days to make a decision on $400,000 worth of land. I mean, you got to give them fair time to look at this. Uh, it could have been delivered earlier. They knew, I'm sure the council knew that they were interested in buying this land. And those are the two concerns right now. The dollar value right now needs to be hashed out. Absolutely, Morris. Like, we're just basing ours on where we felt we were willing to buy that land three years ago. And that's what land went for three years ago. We're all knowledgeable here and we knew things could change. Our, what we want to address is why, so that we can handle this matter fairly as well as you guys. And I guess that's all I have. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah. We look at the data you've given us and then bring a further report yeah. back to council in January. Absolutely, yeah. That's okay. that's where we're at for the year. I tried to stress that much but I need to say with my parents here and I said that the idea of this meeting is to slow things down a bit and address it professionally in a proper manner. I mean, all the avenues gotta be looked at and that's why I in closing again I keep repeating, but why? Why that land wasn't sold at that time? That's a long time ago and values were a lot different back then. If you could give the information of the value of the land that you have to Hillary, and yeah. certainly we apologize for the lateness of the letter. There was no excuse for that, so that's on us. Okay, and absolutely, I have a copy of this letter here. I'm willing to, I got my father to sign it at the bottom here. I'm willing to leave it with all you guys to uh, address. And if you would, please, uh, give us some notice as when you want to address this again, as far as the uh, sale of the land. That's kind of one of our biggest concerns too. We want to address it as much as you guys. Okay. Thank you. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Steve. Thank you. Had you submitted letters in the past or just phone calls or? Uh, to the best of my knowledge, I'm, I'm not speaking on behalf of Stan, but or, or Kathy, but to best my knowledge, they were publicly, they had discussed it with them. I don't know if they have addressed any letters at that time, but they had spoke to county officials, yes. Okay, thank you. So then you'll bring it forth to us again, but with notice to the Mahachas. Okay. okay, so notice will be before any uh, sale takes place or anything like that? Yes, okay. yes. And Fair likely uh, early in January, and we'll call. Okay. Okay. We Thank will you. write a letter and we'll call just to make sure that we did both. Perfect. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. We need a motion on that then? Direction. 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 Yeah. First meeting in January. Look at this whole issue. You're making that notice? Yeah, motion. Okay. Any other discussion? Call the question. Those in favor? So opposed to carry. Thank you for coming in this morning. You're welcome. Okay. If I could, who would I leave this letter with? Hillary. Open yourself. Yeah, thank, thank you very much. Okay, Gary, I think you have one more thing. Huh? I believe it's item H1. So it's the chance. Oh, sorry. Pages 107 to 109. So uh, the Tipton Conference, uh, the 20th Annual Tipton Conference is coming up on Thursday, January 17th, and it's going to be at the uh, Lethbridge Lodge. Uh, Lethbridge County has supported this event for the previous 12 years. 
it's a one of a kind event, of course. It's uh, representing the red meat industry and, and the trends going on there. Usually, there's uh, 350 agriculture producers that attend, along with students. And, and part of our sponsorship here is uh, we give a thousand dollars. It's what uh, through the environmental stream program we have for for the, for the 12 years. And so along with six tickets uh, that become available to us, two are made available for students. So the county sponsors a couple of students and, and that's the, what you get for your thousand dollar sponsorship. And, uh, and then the financial implications otherwise would be the per diems and then your, your kilometers. So um, the recommendation here is that county council approves up to six members to attend the 2019 Tiffin Conference to be held at Sandman Hotel, Signature Hotel on January 17th. Uh, just to add a little bit here, um, Dwayne is a part of the organizing committee and uh, through his program, we sponsor a thousand dollars here for the red meat industry and a thousand dollars goes to Farming Smarter uh, through our budget. Uh, so I think we should probably save, I'm not sure if they're expecting Dwayne to pay for a ticket, if they may be in the past this way. So maybe if we can limit it to five and if there's not five, then we can make it up to staff. Last year, this event was held during the ASB conference. Uh, there wasn't as many tickets available. It was a different type of sponsorship, but we sent uh, two individuals from Lethbridge County ASB to attend the event. And it's, it's a very, very good event. And uh, this one's good. I don't know if you've ever heard uh, Dr. Key Jim. He's one of the premier cattle producers in North America. And uh, there's a, another feedlot owner's, owner from the brand area that would be very good to, t to listen as well. It's, it's a top-notch event, and uh, I don't know where you'd find as good speakers anywhere. So with that, if anybody would like to go, to go away, I guess we should speak up. Sorry. Go ahead, Marsh. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. First of all, it's on the 17th, you said it. That's it right. Pardon me? I didn't say anything. You did. Harry did. He said yes. Yes. It is on the 17th. Thank you. And uh, isn't the isn't that the council meeting? I believe Councillor Zinstra, that's why we changed the meeting to the 16th in January, so everybody can go to the tip. Well, I haven't done that on my calendar yet. So that's great. And uh, the speaker from Grant, is that sheer? It's Balco Feeders, I believe, is the Balco. Yeah, they're the they got a feedlot between Bulk and North. I guess it would be West Bulk. Okay. Even. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This in the past, this one has always kind of bothered me that we send counselors to um, a conference that's geared toward basically basically farm producers. Um, I think it'd be better off that staff go or if you want to donate the rest to the students in my opinion that goes, goes a little farther that way in my opinion boss thank you mr chairman i uh, i know that uh, i hear you uh, steve but uh, you know this this one here i think it's very important that we we do show our face there and i think it's it is a conference that is that is well known in, in southern Alberta, and I've been there before, and I find it very a very good and interesting conference to go to. So, um, just a question: How come the change of venue, or is this? Uh... I'm not sure actually. It used to be down at the college for for quite a few years, but maybe the catering. I'm not sure. Okay, Morris. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I know the last couple of years we missed it because of other uh, conflicts, but I think this one, you know, we should be able to attend. And when you do attend, it seems to be there's quite a few people there. Hey, nice seeing you guys down here. You know, we show a hey, support to the businesses what's in the county, and that is the big businesses in the county do that so I, I i agree with you if it is going to be just a few councils but if it is just a few it's a good idea is there anyone wishing to go Three. so who do we have that would like to go I guess 
the, the red meat industry is, is a very large portion of the county, so uh, uh, would be kind of unwise for somebody not to go. Uh, but I do believe that also some of your staff should be able to be, have the opportunity to use the extra tickets. We can do that. They won't go unused. And just uh, a mention here too: it there is an evening uh, supper with the event, and they have a speaker during the evening as well. Just so you're aware. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. What's that? No warning. Yeah. Um, that's okay. No. Uh, so what we have here is the 2019 interim operating budget approval. Um, I guess there's been some discussion since our last meeting that we're not quite ready to approve the budget as presented. Uh, so we will move forward with an interim operating budget, which is basically the 2018 um, operating budget being approved as the 2019 interim operating budget. Report is for the capitals. We are still seeking capital budget approval for 2019, so we can begin to move forward with some of those projects. Um, any operating projects or any programs um, being considered in the 2019 operating budget will be on hold until we until we do get approval on this. Basically, that's what we're seeking. Any questions? Let's do the interim operating budget. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, bringing forward a renewal on the Royal Bank 
banking compensation agreement is up for renewal right now. Uh, they have presented us with a three-year term, and we are recommending that we accept that three-year term. Um, there are no major changes in the agreement. Uh, they did offer us a better interest rate on our investment account, which is um, prime less 1.7. We did do some um, checking out there to find out what other people are offering on that investment type account, and RBC is by far the best um, at providing that to us. Um, our recommendation is to approve that. We have a very good service from Royal Bank. They do offer us a number of um, services in addition to our banking. They do our AR drug deposits, our scale deposits, our upload, um, all of our web payments and everything. So the recommendation is to approve the signing for three years. In the report, you mentioned that you kind of asked some other banks for, I guess, prices and everything. Yeah. Doing an RFP really wouldn't change anything, probably. Um, you, you, I don't, don't feel of we don't where they're at. Sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. You kind of get the feel of where, where they're at anyway by asking the question. So. Yeah, thank you. Um, through to Councillor Steve Campbell. Um, we don't. Because it's just a checking account, like it's not like it's a huge, they don't pay us to use their services or anything. So basically, the only thing we earn money on with them is on the investment account. The rest is just standard banking fees, like checking fees and, and account fees. Um, the cost of that is, is very minor. In bank fees a year, I'd say less than probably 2500 total, I'm guessing. Um, and just the services that they offer, like. The recommendation to go out for an RFP would, in my opinion, would be if we were very unhappy with their services and, and something needed to change, but it'd be such a overhaul to change banking unless we see a need to do it. It's not, it's not costing us a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Steve. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Then I'll make the motion that we approve the three-year banking compensation agreement with the RBC. Any other discussion? Of the question, those in favor? Those opposed? Carried. Yes. So we did receive a letter from uh, the 20th Independent Field Battery and asking for additional parking to be in our kind of overflow parking area because they do not have any more parking. Uh, their numbers have increased uh, about 15% and they're out of room where they are. So they're asking to go into the overflow parking because the, uh, the spot where the uh, cell tower is is private land and uh, we can't park there anymore. So I think we would only simply refer this to the city of Weber. Yeah, and that's, thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's our recommendation is, is as the city now owns that any leases would have to be requested by the city. So we're just recommending to do a letter to direct them over to the city and the proper official over there. But we do, I think the recommendation is to send a letter because we do typically support the Penny Ridge and any yes. other requests. Um, just unfortunately we can't support this one other than offering a letter to the city saying that we would support it. Of course. Yeah, I think Mr. Chairman, I'll move that recommendation. So we would send both up to both the city and to the um, and to the um, 20th. We could put forward a letter, letter to this to uh, Michael over at the city yeah, you know, yeah. and and, it's, and include the attachment. And we can just let the uh, yeah. original that we're sending them on the on the other hand. Okay. Any other discussion? Call the question. 
question. Yeah, call the question. Those in favor? All the votes. on the Alberta Irrigation Projects Association Conference and um, the recommended motion is that any member of council wishing to attend uh, the conference is February 4th 6th in Calgary at the Deerfoot Inn and Casino. We have two people who are already registered to go right. Claus and Morris. will be doing a presentation with SMRID and the town of Coaldale and we'll be doing that presentation on um, the Malloy drain so that will be another good opportunity as well. Thank you. 